Hey guys, welcome back to Wayne Manor North. This is Dan and I am here with a little project video. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I've made a few of the statue room tables recently that a lot of you have asked me questions about, show you what went into the build, show you the status of uh, where this one's at and share with you a little bit about the materials list for them. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know, post a comment below and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, uh, let's take a look. Okay, unfortunately, the first for the first part of the video, I didn't have, uh, I didn't take video of the initial part of the build. So, what I'm showing here, are just a picture of the materials uh, that I used. So, to start with, this whole table uh, is going to be about 55 inches long. It'll be the bottom section will be 24 inches tall, and the section second smaller section off to the left will also be 24 inches tall. And I'll show you a little bit about that here as, uh, as I take you through this short video. Uh, I started with a four by eight sheet of plywood that I cut up into these pieces. And um, I'll talk a little bit more as we go about the hardware list and what the supporting legs are, etc. as we go forward. Okay, so as you can see, the table I cut into a couple of different sections. I had Home Depot actually cut the wood for me uh, for the build. So as I mentioned, these are 55 inches long and I chose to make my shelf 16 inches deep, approximately. I think it's actually like 15 and three quarter, but um, they're about 16 inches deep. And I had Home Depot cut the pieces for me. Um, what you're looking at here, the two long pieces are the bottom and the top. As I mentioned, they'll be two feet tall, the bottom section. And then this other section off to the left is 11 inches wide or so, about 11 and a half actually, and the same depth, so that nearly 16 inches deep. And that will make up a second section. The stain that I put on the board is just a basic urethane stain. It is gunstock color, and it is a water-based stain made by Varathane. Again, bought this at Home Depot, cost about 10 bucks for the quart, and uh, you can make plenty of tables with that stain. Let me tell you, it goes a long way. So what I did is I stained each of the boards. Oh, I should have mentioned the board. The wood is actually a hardwood plywood. So what you'll see here is I used a three quarter inch piece of molding that I just glued on with Gorilla Glue Super Glue onto the front. Just took a little hacksaw and trimmed off the edges. But you can see from the sides that it is actually plywood but it's a hardwood plywood. So when I tell you this stuff is strong, you can stand on it and it's super, super strong and it has a nice finish on front. I didn't want the striations from the layers of plywood in the front, so I just put this piece of molding on there. The urethane that's on the wood is uh, following the stain is a Verithane Ultimate Polyurethane, as you see here, it's a satin finish, so not too shiny, but also not matte and it goes on super easy. It's also water-based. So what I did is I put one coat on, let it dry for a couple of hours, tops, sanded it with a 220 grit sandpaper, just nice and light, put another coat on, sanded that again, this time with a steel wool pad, which I still have over here. I can see it. Looks like this lovely thing. And then put another coat of polyurethane on. So it went really really smoothly. From a hardware standpoint, what the legs will be is made up of these 24 in, uh, 24 inch long pine needle on this piece, <clears throat> 24 inch long by three quarter inch uh, plumbing piping. So this is the black steel, malleable steel they call it, um, plumbing piping at Home Depot. If they don't have the link you need, they can cut it. Uh, then one of these I actually need to have them split a, a 48 inch because they were out of the 24. Split a 48 inch, uh, they'll thread the end for you, do a real nice job. And these act as the legs for the table. So you get this kind of cool industrial look. And um, and it obviously is super, super strong. These things are real heavy, uh, thick metal. I don't know what the gauge is on the steel, but uh, it's really thick. So let me show you a little bit about the, uh, the connecting hardware. Okay, so the connecting hardware that I'm gonna use is uh, obviously three quarter inch in terms of the receiver. These are called um, floor connectors, and these will be screwed right to the table. 
the 24 inch pipes will be screwed in. Then the same kind of receiver will be screwed on top. Next piece of wood will go on top of that, etc. And I'll show you that build here as we go forward. But um, as you can see, these are also black malleable steel found right at Home Depot. I think this is one of the more expensive, actually one of the more expensive parts of the build as these things are $4 and change a piece. So by the time for a build like this, and you'll see I'm using a lot of them, it kind of adds up. Um, but I'll break that down for you again in the description. All right, guys, I thought what I'd do next is uh, show you just a little bit about how easy this is to put these floor connector pieces on. I use just a simple pencil as my, my guide here to make sure that I've got the right width on the sides. And um, using these black screws from a package of brackets that you can see here that you get in the hardware section. Unfortunately, uh, the black screws that you would use to do something like this aren't readily available uh, as you'd think they would be at Home Depot. Uh, they're not. So I just found these brackets. They're cheap, like three bucks a package, depending on the size of the table and the number of uh, feet that you're installing. Um, that will determine how many. Luckily, there's 16 of the screws that come in this package. But as you can see here with just a, a simple power screwdriver and um, power screwdriver and right brackets, you're in business. So here you go. Here we have the receivers uh, on the bottom shelf. These are what the, uh, the legs will plug into here in a few minutes. I'm going to flip this over right now, though, and put the feet on. I'm actually using the very same floor connectors as feet. Uh, one will connect to the underside of this, followed by a spacer, followed by another foot with some felt on the bottom. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So I'll flip this over. And, uh, and we'll have a look. Okay, we've got our feet pieces in place here, ready to go. We've got all 12 of them. I'm actually using, again, because it's a 55 inch span, I'm gonna use a couple extras right in the middle, just in case I put one of those big, uh, super heavy prime one pieces right in the middle of this shelf, it will be able to support it. So let me get these installed and we'll start getting those legs in. Be right back. All right, guys, I know we said we're moving on to the legs, but there was one couple of things actually I wanted to show you before we go ahead and do that. One of them is uh, just a couple little tricks. Uh, one of them is before you go ahead and flip your table over. So if you've installed feet like this or something like this, there's a couple of things that you want to do. One is, and this just makes your life easier afterwards when you're getting the table set up. So one of them is to ensure that the height of each of these feet are the same. So you're using that three quarter inch connector that I showed you, the threaded connector between these two uh, floor connector pieces. And because of that, you're able to basically adjust these height. They act as levelers on your feet. It's easy if you just kind of start with them all at the same height. That way, when you get them into position on your floor, if you need to adjust one or, not, or, one or another one or what have you, uh, then it's easier to do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, it also gives you a level place or a level uh, set to put your felt pads on. So these are heavy duty felt pads, they're three inch, so they're slightly smaller than the diameter uh, of these metal feet, uh, but these will act to protect your floor. In my case, in my office where this is going, they're hardwood floors, this will help to protect the hardwood from these metal feet. So once I have those installed, I'm going to do that now. Once I have that done, we'll flip this thing over and, uh, and get the legs installed and I'll show you that piece. Okay, let's do that. As you can see, I've started installing the, um, the plumbing pipes, uh, the legs for the table. Um, and as I mentioned before, they're 24 inch plumbing pipes. They are three quarter inch black malleable steel. Uh, they don't come finished. Uh, the black finish is kind of natural to the metal, I guess, in the, in the fabrication process. They do come threaded three quarter inch on both sides uh, for this pipe size. They come a bit greasy, uh, the stickers that are on them for sizing and identification of the pipe, etc. Kind of a pain in the neck to take off, but took those off, scuffed them up a little bit, give them a little bit more of that industrial look, um, and I've started installing them as you can see here. Basically when you install them, um, the idea is that they're just kind of uh, finger tight. So you're not really kind of wrenching them down, it's, it's nothing like that, you just kind of put them in finger tight. And once we go ahead and put the feet on top, which I'll show you in a minute, 
those two will act as the levelers and the sizers to ensure that each of these is the right height. So I'm going to go ahead and finish installing those. I'll grab the tops and, uh, and I'll show you that next. And we're back. Uh, project moves on. So we have, I have here my six uh, floor connector or floor flanges, I think, as they're technically called. I'm going to go ahead and put one on each uh, of the tops here. This is going to act as the connector to the what will be the top shelf that will sit on top of here, and we'll go ahead and attach that in a minute. What I wanted to show you is as you go ahead and attach all of these, what you're going to want to do is find kind of the median height. So after you have the chance to take a look, after the you have the chance, sorry, as I almost dropped that, uh, to put each of these on. And again, I'm just kind of putting them on finger tight. I'm not really wrenching them down or anything. I'm going to go ahead and measure from the table itself, from the wood, to the top edge. So that first one there is 24, 24 and 5 eighths, roughly. This one is 24 and 5 eighths. So it looks like that might be my number. If I've got two, I can pretty much 24 and 5 eighths. So yeah, that's gonna be my number. So as I go ahead and I put the other three on here in a minute, I'm gonna make sure that they're all that 24 and 5 eighths. That way it gives me again a nice level plane to start with and I can adjust from there. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll get the top on the uh, sawhorses here and we'll attach this to, to it and I'll show you how that works. Okay, let's do it. Uh, I went ahead and took the bottom shelf with the feet and the legs off the sawhorses. I took the top shelf, flipped it over so now it's sitting upside down so it's top face down. Got the underside of the top shelf. I then took the bottom shelf assembly, put it on top, and I'm gonna go ahead now and screw um, the legs with the feet that we installed already, knowing that they're all 24 and 5 eighths, at least on this table. Um, so they're all approximately the same height within 16th of an inch, so close enough. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and screw these into the top, uh, the underside of the top of the table. And what I'm using as my guide, as I showed at the beginning of the video, is that pencil width, right? So we're going to mount against uh, this inside edge of the front molding. Make sure you've got the front molding here, both sides, uh, both pieces. Uh, against the front molding, a pencil width apart from the outside edge, and I'm gonna use that to set this leg in place and then use the same measurements that I used on the underside to, put, to set this middle leg in place, the end leg, and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw each one of those on. One of the things I want to show you guys, and this is just a matter of being flexible uh, with what you need for materials, one of the things at Home Depot, funny enough, that I had a hard time finding were the stupid little black screws to include or to connect these flanges. Uh, they need to be pretty short because you only have a three quarter inch substrate. These screws need to be pretty short. So I actually found these, uh, these they're called corner braces, these metal corner braces. They come with 16 of little uh, half inch little black screws that work perfectly for this application. So these cost, I think, uh, $3.50 or $4 per package, but again, you get 16 screws each, so it kind of goes a long way. Wanted to share that with you. Those are the ones that I'm using. I'm gonna go ahead, attach these legs now, and, uh, and we'll get a set. I'll look at what the base assembly looks like before we put the corner shelf uh, on top of it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're in the home stretch and putting together a piece of statue furniture here. Uh, as you can see, I have the corner shelf that we're going to install. And like I said, I think you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. Um, the way that this lays out, the way that this table and shelf lays out, the beauty of putting something like this together rather than buying a piece of, or a shelving unit in the store is you can make it to exactly what you need. This piece of furniture fits the corner that I'm building out, that I'm changing around in my collection room perfectly. Um, and this shelf uh, does as well. And uh, we'll see what that looks like in a few minutes. But what I'm going to do is this is basically a miniature version of what we just built with the larger, uh, the base component. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. I'll start installing. I have all of my, uh, the bottom part of the feet, the pipes for the legs, the top part like that. And then we'll take that whole thing, screw it onto the base unit and um, we will be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks. All right guys, last step. We've got our corner shelf that goes on top of the main unit uh, all set up. We've got all the legs installed. I've got all the feet uh, or the flanges, three quarter inch flanges installed. 
These will be what connects to the base unit. Uh, I've measured them all out, and just getting back to the point I made earlier about size, these came out to 24 and 3 quarters was the best measurement uh, that made them all equal in level. So again, it's the beauty of being able to measure, or sorry, to level with, uh, with, these, with this kind of setup. So we're done that. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera around, um, and we'll go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like putting this on the main unit. Let's do it. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Uh, corner unit is in place. I just have to go ahead and screw that down. Uh, when you go ahead and set this shelf onto the one below it, if you do this, whether you do it with one shelf, two, or three, one of the things you just want to be careful of is scratching this surface. So these metal feet, if you do decide to use these kinds of uh, plumbing components, just be careful. They're raw metal components. They're really not meant for finish work like this. So they're kind of sharp and they'll scratch your finish really easy, easily. So just be careful with that. Uh, the other tip that I wanted to share with you is when I was going ahead and I had Home Depot cut up that piece of uh, three quarter inch hardwood plywood that made all of these pieces, I had them cut me an extra shelf. So in the future, if I decide that at the other end of the unit that I want to put up another shelf, I can go ahead and do that. Right now, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the piece that I have intended for that side is the Bain Premium Format, which probably wouldn't fit under here. As you can see, it'll take a smaller format statue. One of the pieces I have maybe in mind uh, for under here is the Joker uh, quarter scale premium format, the Heath Ledger. So we'll see if that fits. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to screw these down into place. I'm going to ensure that these outside legs align with the legs below it, which should be pretty easy. I'm going to use my pencil measurement uh, on the side and the back uh, that I used underneath, so it should line right up and, uh, and we'll be done. After that, I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys some close up videos, some close up pics, and, uh, and share some final thoughts on this piece. All right, let's do it. Guys, here we go. We've got the completed project. Here's the table or shelves. Uh, I guess you would expect that this could hold, I mean, any number of statues. It's certainly built strong enough between the three quarter inch ply, hardwood ply, and the steel legs could easily hold any prime one third scales. You could even stick a half scale on this. I think I could even stand on this comfortably. Uh, without worry, um, but you can basically put this put whatever you want on here. I'm expecting I'm probably going to have a prime one in the middle here I'll probably have two maybe even three other quarter scales on that shelf That the top shelf there that'll either be a quarter scale or a third scale I'm thinking maybe a third scale Batman on that shelf in the corner and then probably four premium formats underneath So this is what it looks like Okay guys, so just some final thoughts on this piece. Um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, I think one of the cooler aspects of doing something like this is, A, there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes from just creating something yourself um, that is a part of your collection. So that in and of itself is really cool. Uh, second piece is being able to customize it to whatever you need. This piece will fit uh, exactly where I wanted it to. It's going to accommodate not only a couple of the statues I have now, but what I have coming on PO uh, over the next 12 months plus or so. So this will kind of uh, help open up some space in my collection without creating a lot of clutter and without forcing statues uh, into shelves that, um, that exist in the collection already. So it helps that way too. Um, it's just a really fun project. The other part of, uh, of setting up the tables like this, A, you could use whatever finish matches uh, your collection room. So whether you wanted to paint them black, paint them white, um, you could actually even paint the legs, which originally I was going to do. I just found that they look kind of cool in this raw state. Uh, but you could really make this unit look whatever, you, however you want it to. This is the third unit I've made. I've made two smaller ones that are exactly the same style, use the same legs, use the same stain, same wood, same everything. So it really kind of helps to kind of create these matching tables and shelf units uh, in my collection room. Just gives it a really nice kind of a bit richer aesthetic. So um, really cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the, uh, the pieces that I used, uh, the raw materials that I purchased at Home Depot. I'm not sure exactly the cost of what this all rolled up to be, but I can tell you it's a lot cheaper than if I, than if I would have had a piece of custom furniture built. So really happy with the piece. I'm happy with the way this turned out. Uh, I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, definitely you know, um, put them below, uh, below the video here. It, you can also find me on Facebook in the Batman Statue Collector Group. I'm happy to help you. Uh, however I can. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope this was interesting. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time here on the Batman Statue Collector.